Hey, what's up guys? Um, I just watched a movie, uh, The Quiet Place Part 2, or A Quiet Place Part 2, and I was going to try and film out here, but you probably can't see it exactly, but there's like a bunch of little bugs everywhere, and of course now that I'm trying to shoot, like, there's a bunch of people walking around everywhere now, but it was like empty when I got here. Here, I'll try and show you those bugs. So, I am probably going to have to continue this at home. Hey guys, so I couldn't find a place to film uh, outside and the reason why I wanted to film it outside is because A Quiet Place 2 takes place outside. Well, both of them pretty much do, but um, I just thought it'd be cool to like film outside, but I went to the park and I uh, found a little spot where I thought it was going to be quiet, like a different park, and then this like really loud semi drove by and then all these people started walking by so I just gave up on that and came home and now we'll just talk about it here I guess hopefully it's not too boring but yeah I tried to be outside but it just didn't work out that way uh, but anyways a quiet place too uh, we'll probably just start I guess uh, like how I usually start with you know like the introduction inciting incident uh, character motives and intentions, obstacles, character development and relationships, turn of events, uh, rising action, and climax. So, like, act one is the setup, right? Like, the the opening scene, which is really cool. Uh, it, like, opens with, like, a small prequel to what, like, how the events eventually take place in the first movie. And um, it's pretty cool to see how it starts out because... You know, everything's like normal and then uh, you get to see, you know, the aliens basically crashing through the Earth's atmosphere. It doesn't really exactly show what their eyes, but um, I think I can confirm that it's not a spaceship because those um, death angels, I think they're called, were uh, on this planet and it exploded and like the surviving death angels, like we're all on these little meteorites that just went out into the universe, I guess, the galaxy. So how long they've been in space before they crashed to Earth is not ever spoken about in the movies or explained. Uh, so yeah, that happens in the opening scene. And it's really cool how in the opening scene where... Uh, the main characters get split up pretty much. Uh, Evelyn Abbott uh, and Lee, Lee Abbott, which is John Krasinski and Emily Blunt, the parents. Um, Evelyn takes uh, Marcus, which is the, the son, and they're in their car. And um, John Krasinski, which is Lee Abbott, takes... Um, Reagan Abbott in his car <clears throat> because they initially first started uh, walking back towards the car before the stuff got really bad and then uh, stuff got really bad and the the opening scene is really cool how they film uh, the perspective from uh, either Lee's the reason why I keep looking over here is because I got the the cast and the names and stuff uh, pulled up on my laptop and uh it was really cool because, you know, Regan in the movie is deaf, so she can't hear anything. So every time it would kind of, uh, and when I say kind of, it's not like a POV of her. Uh, it's like pretty much just showing her character, but then everything goes quiet because she's deaf. So y you get to see it and get kind of terrified in that sense uh, throughout the movie because whenever they make it a specific shot for her, for us, the audience, to feel you know, what it would be like to be deaf in a situation like that and multiple situations in the movie, it gets you 
kind of anxious, like gives you high anxiety because stuff is happening around her, but she can't hear it, you know? So it's like us as the audience can see stuff, you know, happening. I don't want to give too much spoilers away, actually, because uh, I want you guys to go see it for yourselves. But yes, there's definitely uh, spoilers in this movie. Anyways, so the opening scene is really cool. Uh, and then things obviously get out of out of hand in that and then it fast forwards to day 474 i think this is just off memory uh so i'm not sure how accurate i am and that would be the inciting incident like the what gets them you know the the inciting incident and then after that the movie after like the opening scene the movie starts off where the first one ends and then the family actually like leaves their farm or their farm area, their house, and they start walking and uh, they run into a trap that's set by uh, Emmett. He doesn't have a last name. It seems like played by Cillian Murphy. And uh, I'm keeping stuff out because I don't want this video to be as long as the Mortal Kombat review. <laughs> uh, anyways, so uh, they end up meeting with Emmett and he doesn't really want to help. Uh, Marcus got hurt in a bear trap, like on the way, like as they were going to find more people and, uh, Emmett really doesn't want to help. And then, uh, Emily Blunt's character, uh, Evelyn, like shows him the baby and he just kind of like looks at it, like, you know, it changes everything kind of, you know, kind of thing. So he starts to help uh, but w one thing I found interesting about uh, this character is he's quite different than than um, Lee Abbott's character because this guy doesn't want to help and Lee Abbott wanted to help everybody. So uh, the kids take a more leading role in this movie also because... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Marcus gets hurt, so he has to stay around and watch the baby as uh evelyn the mom goes into town to get him some you know painkillers and cleaning and gauze and all that stuff some you know like medical stuff and um somehow reagan figures out that uh there's a transmission from an island uh through a radio station that is playing this song i forgot what the song is called you guys will see it in the movie uh it, it plays a pretty important piece to this movie because she wants to go there because um to the island to broadcast her hearing aid that they used at the end of the first movie to with the high frequencies to make the uh, death angels go really crazy because they're extremely sensitive to sound they're blind so sound is like their vision pretty much and their sense because they obviously can't smell. Otherwise, they would smell the human. So they just have like uh, really high sensitivity uh, to sound. So she wants to find this island uh, to broadcast that frequency, that high frequency that makes the Death Angels paralyzed pretty much. And the movie is pretty much all about that. Uh, there's a lot of character development in the kids this time more instead of like the whole family i guess because the kids take a lot more of a leading role and the obstacles that they face is that first uh they run into emmett and he doesn't really want to help but then he ends up helping and then uh reagan she wants to go find this island but her brother marcus doesn't want her to go so she ends up sneaking out and then the next day, Marcus lets Evelyn, the mom, know that uh, Reagan is gone. And she begs Cillian Murphy's character, Emmett, to help. And you can tell he doesn't want to, but it's more because of the situation of the world versus like he doesn't actually want to. So he heads out and goes to look for her. And then when he finds her she convinces him 
uh, through like very little sign language and they they get their communication down where he can convince her or she can convince him to help her. And uh, the mom goes into town uh, to get medical supplies for Marcus. And during then, Marcus, I don't know why, but he, well, I do know why, but he shouldn't have done this. He leaves the baby down in that bunker where Emmett was hiding out. Uh, and he welcomed the family in there. So he uh, goes and leaves the baby down in the bunker, and he because they're in like a steel mill. And then they Emmett like walks upstairs above the bunker or basement or whatever, and like starts to look out the window because his mom has been gone for so long. And then uh, something happens. I don't know. He creates noise somehow i can't remember exactly and then obviously he has to get back down into the bunker because there's just an unintended baby there and then he has to go grab her get into this vault and they have a short amount of oxygen in this vault because apparently it's um airtight so those are some obstacles that are happening in this and let's see next i got is uh turn of events on um on my list and the turn of events is you know when when emmett decides to help reagan which is cool because you know it's uh the the character development is is happening and uh the reason why he didn't emmett didn't want to help be uh reagan is because you know, you're saying the people left in this world aren't really worth saving. And they actually run into some of those people uh, on this dock because they were going to take the boat to the island. And they run into these people that pretty much want to just scavenge them, like, if that's the right word, you know, like take all their stuff. And they start to. And then uh, Emmett creates like this diversion to help the uh, to help Reagan. And then like one of those death angels comes and attacks everybody but uh emmett and reagan make it because they get on this boat and those death angels can't swim um so you see one of them drown and then uh, uh emmett's trying to swim away from this death angel that's on top of a different boat and reagan ends up coming on a her own boat to res- rescue him and then when she helps him up into the boat. He has her like earpiece, uh, like trapped in his mouth, so it would stay safe. So that's cool. And then they they make it to the island, and everything is like really normal there. They're having like a bonfire, and they're making you know just regular noise and eating food and grilling and stuff. And it looks it looks really good. And the leader, which is played by um i don't know why it's not letting me go um i forgot his name but it, it oh there it is um d jaiman hansu uh he's his character's name is man on island in this movie uh so they get there and they agreed to help and everything and that's like this whole rising action you know they get to the island the mom gets back to uh, the steel mill into the bunker where where Marcus and the baby were, which doesn't have a name in this movie or doesn't... I never see the baby eat any food either. But anyways, yeah, stuff gets like pretty weird, like kind of like ugh, during this movie, like you kind of like, wow, what's happening? Because he like takes the baby's oxygen because they've they're running out of oxygen, like locked because he accidentally locked themselves in that vault you know, until Emily Blunt's character got there, Evelyn. But he, like, takes the oxygen, like, from the baby and, like, puts it in his mouth to... Or not in his mouth, but, like, over his mouth to breathe also because there's no oxygen. Then he, it's, like, this back and forth thing between the baby and him that he's trying to do. And it, it just makes you have really high anxiety because, like, could you imagine, like, stopping oxygen from a baby just to breathe yourself? You know, it's just... I don't know. Anyway... 
Uh, so this rising action, uh, everything's like going good. And obviously, you know, something's about to happen. Anyways, that boat that the other death angel was on top of when he was trying when it was trying to grab Emmett, uh, that thing washed ashore to that island. And he starts running towards all the people and like, get in, get inside, get inside. And yeah, that uh, Death Angel just starts attacking everybody. Uh, eventually, they make it to the radio station and they, you know, she grabs her hearing aid and like smashes it into the microphone and then broadcasts that signal. And it, it's immediately paralyzed just by the sheer high frequency sound that it can't tolerate and uh they she's she like hits it with a pole or something and then uh it cuts to emily blunt's character because they broadcast that uh signal that frequency through the radio and she ends up shooting it and i believe that's it uh as far as the ending goes um i guess i just had like a lot of questions about like if they in, in the movie or in, in the middle like when uh reagan figures out that she wants to go to that island because they broadcast this song and then when you go and actually see the radio booth it has a microphone in it, right? So why didn't they just communicate a message uh, to whoever may be listening and either run that on a loop, which I could easily do in as long as it takes to read the message and then you just loop it, right? I don't know, did I miss something? Uh, I don't know, it doesn't really explain that unless unless I completely missed it. But I, I think because she has to like figure out this song and then she's like, Regan is like, oh, it's I figured it out and I mapped it out. It's on an it's coming from an island. We need to go there. And like, why didn't they just like say, hey, we're on an island. Like, here's where it is. Come here, you know, for like a safe haven. Um, And I think that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video isn't as long as the Mortal Kombat video. Um, but a question, is the movie clear and easy to follow along? Yes, I believe it is. It's actually a really good movie, I think, uh, especially when they openly uh, were fully transparent and admitting to, like, there was no sequel planned at all. Like, they did not plan for a sequel. They didn't think there was going to be a sequel. So the fact that John Krasinski uh, openly says that and created this good out of a movie, I mean, obviously, since it did good, there's, you know, money incentives, but it definitely doesn't feel like a cash grab, like at all. Uh, I don't know what I was doing with my hands there, but I I would say watch it. And it's nice that theaters are opening up. Um, I had COVID-19 in November and then I had my vaccination in March. So I'm pretty good. I still take my precautions and everything. Um, but yeah, seeing, <laughs> seeing it in theater was like, like really cool. Um, I think that is it for me. The, the film work is really good. Uh, the, the scenes, the lighting, um, the trailer sets it up really well. So if you saw the trailer, like you'll, and if you like the trailer and you like the first movie, it's it's really like, and uh, John Krasinski also says this, uh, it's like an extension of the movie. It's like not really a sequel. It's just like the movie just like carried on kind of, you know, except for that prequel part, which I thought was really cool. Like I'm pretty excited for you guys to see that actually. Cause I mean, yeah, it's in the trailer, but like you just see more of it and then it, it kind of relaxes you in a way, or at least it did for me. And then everything just gets really unsettling after that. And it's just like really sad. And, uh, you know, how things 
just got out of control, um, out of their the humans' control and stuff. So uh, I think that's all I really have um, for this video. But uh, let me know what you guys think if you want and if you guys have seen it. Um, yeah, I'm trying to do this all in one take because I honestly just don't feel like editing because uh, that Mortal Kombat video took forever to edit. And <laughs> even if this one's long, oh wait, I'm looking at it right now. It's like 19 minutes long. Okay. Um, I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> I'm just going to upload it like this. So I don't know why I find that funny, but uh, yeah, I'll, my name's Halion and I will talk to you guys later.